Hello everyone, my name is Mauro Belgiovine and I'm a PhD student at Northeastern University, working as a research assistant for Genesis Lab. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to generate a dataset for massive MIMO channel estimation and how to train a neural network to perform this task in order to overcome the limitation of traditional signal processing based techniques. The source code we are going to use refers to our recently published paper Deep Learning at the Edge for Channel Estimation in Beyond 5G Massive MIMO and it's publicly available on GitHub. In order to follow the tutorial and run the code, we first need to clone the repository from GitHub using the standard git clone command. Before running the downloaded code, we need to check all the requirements are satisfied to launch the simulation. We provide a complete pipeline bash script, indicated in this slide, to run end-to-end -end the simulation study, from dataset generation to training and testing of the models. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will mainly cover the data generation part and how to run the script to train the model. After all the dependencies are satisfied, we need to configure the necessary environment variables to launch the scripts. We need to indicate the Python binary we want to use, the MATLAB binary used to run the simulation, and the paths where the MATLAB code for the hybrid beamforming example is located. Moreover, we are going to specify the parameters of our simulated system. Since we perform downlink transmissions, we are going to specify the number of transmitter antennas of the base station, the number of receiver antenna for the users, the number of channel sounding packets to be generated for training and testing purposes, and the SNR levels considered for the test sets. Let's take a look at how training and testing datasets are generated and how they are converted from MATLAB format to Python ready pickled files. Here is an overview of how channel sounding frames are generated for each transmission. We consider an OFDM system operating on millimeter wave bands. First, we are going to generate a standard long training frame or LTF containing a pilot sequence that spans over both pilot and data usable subcarriers. Then, this LTF signal is replicated for all the transmitter antennas. A different orthogonal mapping sequence is applied to each signal in order to avoid interference during the initial omnidirectional simultaneous transmission. After the orthogonal signals are generated, an inverse fast Fourier transform is used to generate the n time domain signals that will be transmitted at every antenna element from the base station. After its creation, the channel sounding frame is passed through a scattering MIMO channel, randomly generated at runtime for every transmission. After the signal has traveled through the wireless channel, Additive white Gaussian noise is applied to simulate interference and thermal noise at the receiver side. After the signal is received through its M antenna elements, the receiver converts each signal again into frequency domain using an FFT, and then they are passed to a channel estimation block. Here, the M times N channel matrix is finally retrieved after reapplying the orthogonal mapping code in order to extract the n channel states relative to every transmitter antenna for every m receiver antenna elements. The issue with traditional approaches is that they are either prone to errors in presence of low SNR, as for the least square case, or incurs into a high computational cost while requiring prior knowledge of statistical channel features, as in the case of LMMC. The way we designed our neural network model is such that it uses as input one or more received time domain channel sounding frames and, for each of these signals, predicts 
its channel estimation in frequency domain. In this way, we can obtain directly the channel state information at all the subcarriers and in each subchannel as output of the model by performing a single forward pass. In order to make our model provide better prediction, we neglect the effect of noise we would typically observe in a real system while collecting the training data. This is because we will apply, during training, multiple random levels of noise to the incoming signals, while making our model always predict the best possible channel estimation for a given channel configuration. We call this the denoising approach. The dataset generation code that we will demonstrate in this tutorial will generate the received signals and relative outputs. Then, we will convert its format so that it's ready to be used by the Python training code. Let's see now the code in action. First, we navigate to the source code folder we just downloaded from GitHub. Next, we are going to set up the environment variables as we explained earlier. In this case, we are just reducing the number of channel sounding packets to be generated, just for demonstration purposes. Using the command source, we permanently store into our bash session these variables. We can visualize these variables through the echo command. Now let's create the directory that will be used to store the generated datasets. Let's navigate into the MATLAB code folder in order to launch the MATLAB script used to generate data. Within MATLAB execution, First, we have to add the path pointing to the folder containing the helper functions. Then, we have to configure the arguments of the generate function. We here specify the number of packets, simulation parameters and the SNR level to start the generation process. Note that SNR level is set to 100 and 20 dBs in order to neglect the amount of noise applied during generation. This is needed in order to apply our denoising method. The script will take a few seconds to start up and will generate all the requested packets. Note that for large quantities of packets generated, the time and resources needed to generate at once all the packets would increase. After the process is complete, we can verify that the generated files are present in the folder we specified. Now, let's create the folder that will contain the Python-ready datasets. Now we use the provided script in order to convert the data from .mat format into a pickle file. To run this script, we have to specify the original .mat file path and the, nest and the destination binary output file. The script will extract for each transmission the necessary input and outputs to be used by our model during the training process. When the conversion is complete, we can verify that also the binary files are generated and are ready to be used by our Python-based TensorFlow application.
Following the same approach, we will generate the testing dataset for different SNR levels. The provided pipeline script takes care of generating both training and testing dataset in an automated way. The range of SNR considered for testing purposes in this work is between minus 25 dB and 10 dB. The simulation operates on a center frequency of 28 GHz. Therefore, the perceived SNR at the receiver side is typically lower due to higher path loss. Now that the dataset is ready, let's see how the model can be trained using our code. In this slide, we give an overview of how the data is pre-processed before it's passed as input to our channel estimator Deep Neural Network. The diagram on top shows the data augmentation process, consisting in the application of noise to the noiseless received LTF signals. The amount of noise must be picked from the noise range considered at transmission generation time, and it is applied during training after each mini batch is generated. The noisy signal is then concatenated with the orthogonal mapping sequence relative to the antenna it has been transmitted from. Note that for every M received signals, N copies of it with the appropriate orthogonal sequence must be processed by the neural network, one for each N transmitter antennas, in order to retrieve the complete 3D channel matrix M times N times K, where M is the number of receiver antennas, N is the number of transmitter antennas, and k is the number of usable subcarriers. For the training operation, we first create a folder that we will use to store the trained model. Note that in this case we have to train two separate models, one that operates on the real and the other on the imaginary part of the incoming complex signals. The training for both models is performed by the dedicated training script. To run it, we have to specify the input pickle dataset, the size of neural network, and other parameters necessary for the execution of the script. Please refer to the main pipeline script to check all the needed parameters. After the script starts, the structure of the model is shown on the terminal, and the training process starts. When it finishes, we will find the model's file in the desired folder. The rest of the pipeline script takes care of the testing phase in a similar way. Testing is performed using the model with the test datasets as input for all the SNR level considered, as explained earlier in this tutorial. A for loop is performed to test over each SNR level in the test set, saving the output channel estimation for each transmission back into .mat format. Once the channel estimation output from the DNN model is produced, a separate MATLAB script is launched in order to evaluate the performance of the model compared to the LS and the LMMC channel estimators. We can see that the proposed method outperforms LS estimation and LMMC by multiple orders of magnitudes in terms of beta rate and beamforming gain. Overall, the neural network is able to overcome the large noise corruptions for signals at lower SNR levels improves its ability to provide a highly accurate channel estimation that makes the beamforming process more accurate and finally increase the network performance. This concludes our tutorial. Thanks for your attention. For any question or feedback, feel free to get in touch via email.